Hello and welcome to The Aesthetic Philosophy. This is the second video in the series I'm doing on my channel where I discuss different literary works, ones that I really enjoyed and also ones that I perhaps not so much as enjoyed as I simply feel are valuable. My previous video was on the Dostoevsky novel The Brothers Karamazov and so if that interests you I'll have a link in the description and I'll have this as part of a playlist, uh, so you can check that out if you want to. But today I'm going to be discussing Animal Farm by George Orwell. One of the biggest kind of themes of this novel is the corruption of socialist ideals in the Soviet Union. Animal Farm is most famous in the West as a stinging critique of the historic and rhetoric of the Russian Revolution. It retells the story of the emergence and development of Soviet communism in the form of an animal fable. Animal Farm allegorizes the rise and the power of the dictator Joseph Stalin. In the novel The Overthrow of the Human Oppressor Mr. Jones by a democratic coalition of animals quickly gives way to the consolidation of power among the pigs, much like the Soviet intelligentsia. The pigs establish themselves as the ruling class in the new society. The struggle for preeminence between Trotsky and Stalin emerges in the rivalry between the pigs Snowball and Napoleon. In both the historical and fictional cases, the idealistic but politically less powerful figure, Trotsky and Snowball, is expelled from the revolutionary state by the malicious and violent usurge of power Stalin and Napoleon. The purges and show trials in which Stalin eliminates his enemies and solidifies his political base find expression in Animal Farm as the false confessions and executions of animals whom Napoleon distrusts following the collapse of the windmill. Stalin's tyrannical rule and eventual abandonment of the founding principles of the Russian Revolution are represented by the pig's turn to violent government and the adoption of human traits and behaviours the trappings of their original oppressors. Although Orwell strongly believed in socialist ideals, he felt that the Soviet Union realized these ideals in a terrible and perverse form. His novel creates its most powerful ironies in the moments in which Orwell depicts the corruption of the animalists' ideals by those in power. For Animal Farm serves not so much as to condemn tyranny or disposition, as to indict the horrifying hypocrisy of tyranny that base themselves on an O to their initial power, ideologies of liberation and equality. The gradual disintegration and perversion of the Seven Commandments illustrates this hypocrisy with vivid force, as do Squealer's elaborate philosophical justifications for the pig's blatant, unprincipled actions. Thus, the novel critiques the violence of the Stalinist regime against the human beings it ruled, and also points to Soviet communism's violence against human logic, language and ideals. Animal Farm offers commentary on the development of class tyranny and the human tendency to maintain and re-establish class structures, even in societies that allegedly stand for total equality. The novel illustrates how classes that are initially unfeist in the face of a common enemy, as the animals are against the humans, may become internally divided when that enemy is eliminated. The expulsion of Mr. Jones creates a power vacuum, and it is only so long before the next oppressor assumes totalitarian power. The natural division between the intellectual and physical labour quickly becomes apparent and expresses itself as a new set of class divisions, with the brain workers, as the pigs claim to be, using their superior intelligence to manipulate society to their own benefit. Orwell never clarifies in Animal Farm whether this negative state of affairs constitutes an inherent aspect of society or merely an outcome contingent on the integrity of society's intelligentsia. In either case, the novel points to the force of this tendency towards class stratification in many communities and the threat that it poses to democracy and freedom. The novel also explores the danger of a naive working class. One of the novel's most impressive accomplishments is its portrayal not just of the figures in power, but also of the oppressed people themselves. 
animal farm is not told from the perspective of any particular character, although occasionally it does slip into Clover's consciousness. Rather, the story is told from the perspective of the common animals as a whole, gullible, loyal and hard-working. These animals give Orwell a chance to sketch how situations of oppression arise not only from the motivations and tactics of the oppressors, but also from the naivete of the oppressed. They are not necessarily in a position to be educated or informed, however they don't necessarily try to. When presented with a dilemma, Boxer prefers not to puzzle out the implications of various possible actions, but instead to repeat to himself, Napoleon is always right. Animal Farm demonstrates how the inability or unwillingness to question authority condemns the working class to suffer the full extent of the ruling class's oppression. This also leaks into the idea of how the abuse of language is instrumental when it comes to the abuse of power. One of Orwell's central problems, both in Animal Farm and in 1984, is the way in which language can be manipulated as an instrument of control. In Animal Farm, the pigs gradually twist and distort a rhetoric of socialist revolution to justify their behaviour to keep the other animals in the dark. The animals heartily embrace Major's visionary ideal of socialism, but after Major dies, the pigs gradually twist the meaning of his words. As a result, the other animals seem unable to oppose the pigs without also opposing the ideas of the rebellion. By the end of the novel, after Squealer's repeated reconfiguration of the Seven Commandments in order to decriminalize the pigs' treacheries, the main principle of the farm can be openly stated as all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. This outrageous abuse of the word equal and the ideal equality in general typifies the pig's method, which becomes increasingly audacious as the novel progresses. Orwell's sophisticated exposure of this abusive language remains one of the most compelling and enduring features of Animal Farm, worthy of close study even after we have decoded its allegorical characters and events. One of the bigger and more general themes of the novel is the idea of corruption, Animal Farm demonstrates the idea that power always corrupts. The novel's heavy use of foreshadowing, especially in the opening chapter, creates the sense that the events of the story are unavoidable. Not only is Napoleon's rise to power inevitable, the novel strongly suggests that any other possible ruler would have been just as bad as Napoleon. Although Napoleon is more power-hungry than Snowball, plenty of evidence exists to suggest that Snowball would have been just as corrupt as a ruler. Before his expulsion, Snowball goes along with the pig's theft of milk and apples, and the disastrous windmill is his idea. Even Old Major is not incorruptible. Despite his belief that all animals are equal, in chapter 1, he lectures the other animals from a raised platform, suggesting he may actually view himself as above the other animals on the farm. In the novel's final image, the pigs become indistinguishable from the human farmers, which hammers home the idea that power inevitably has the same effect on anyone who yields it. It doesn't matter who or how. The failure of intellect is an interesting topic that the novel discusses. Animal Farm is deeply skeptical about the value of intellectual activity. The pigs are identified as the most intelligent animals, but their intelligence rarely produces anything of value. Instead, the pigs use their intelligence to manipulate and abuse the other animals. The novel identifies several other ways in which intelligence fails to be good or useful. Benjamin is literate, but he refuses to read, suggesting that intelligence is worthless without the moral sense to engage in politics and the courage to act. The dogs are nearly as literate as the pigs, but they are not interested in reading anything except the Seven Commandments, as quoted from Chapter 3. The dogs use their intelligence to suggest that intellect is useless, even harmful when it is combined with a personality that prefers to obey orders rather than question them. Furthermore, the novel explains and explores the exploitation of animals by humans. As well as being an allegory for the ways that humans exploit, and oppress one another, Animal Farm also takes a literal argument. Humans exploit and oppress animals. 
While the animal's rebellion is in a comic tone, it ends on a serious and touching note, when the animals, to quote, wipe out the last traces of Joan's hated reign, the harness room at the end of the stables was broken open, the bits, the nose rings, the dog chains, and the cruel knives with which Mr. Jones had been used to castrate the pigs and lambs were flung down the well. The novel also suggests that there is a real connection, as well as an allegorical one, between the exploitation of animals and the exploitation of human workers. Mr. Pilkington jokes to Napoleon by saying, If you lower animals to contend with, we have our lower classes. When analysing the central ideas of Animal Farm, it's important to understand the central conflict. The central conflict of the novel arises when the animal's desire for freedom and equality is corrupted by the consolidation of political power amongst the pigs. The animal's original goal is expressed in the first chapter in Old Major's teachings, and especially in Beasts of England, the song that becomes the anthem of Animal Farm. At the beginning of the novel, political power is expressed. The animal's original goal is expressed in that first chapter especially. Political power is embodied by the farmer Mr. Jones, who indulges himself while the animals starve. The animals win easily when they rebel against Mr. Jones, and as a result, they make the mistake of thinking they have overcome the political power itself. In reality, they have only overcome one of the forms of that political power. By the end of chapter 2, when Napoleon steals the cow's milk, the political power becomes embodied by the pigs. Chapters 2 to 7 trace the development of the pig's power and the other animals' growing awareness that they have not achieved their goal after all. The pigs, and Napoleon in particular, come to embody political power in three ways. First, they claim more and more of the farm's resources for themselves. They start by stealing the milk and apples and then eventually sell animal products to buy human luxuries, like whiskey. Second, the pigs become more violent, introducing the dog police force and ordering executions. Third, the pigs claim the power to determine what the truth is. Squealer changes the commandments of animalism and the story of the Battle of the Cowshed. Meanwhile, the animals slowly come to realise that their lives are no better than they were before the rebellion. The climax of the novel occurs in Chapter 7, when Napoleon decides to sell the hens' eggs. The hens finally recognise that the pigs are their antagonists, and they rebel. The rebellion is brutally crushed, and the hens are executed. Now, Boxer is the only character still clinging to the hope that freedom can be achieved. He has worked tirelessly to achieve his goal set forth by Old Major, which for Boxer is represented, his hope of one day retiring to a special pasture. However, when the time comes for Boxer to retire, he is sold and killed. Boxer's betrayer marks which political power embodied in Napoleon and in the pigs, and it completely defeats the animals. In Animal Farm's final pages, the animals watch the pigs dining with the human farmers and find that they are unable to tell the difference between the humans and the pigs. The pigs have become with one with the human farmers because both groups are equally corrupted by the reality of the political power they hold. Let's take a look at the protagonists. The animals as a group are the protagonists of the novel. Their group is to achieve the vision set out by Old Major equality and freedom for all the animals. This goal brings them into conflict with the reality of political power. First, they must confront their power by rebelling against Mr. Jones. Later, they must confront the power in a more subtle and dangerous form, the manipulation and deceit of the pigs. While the animals defeat Mr. Jones easily, they are completely fooled by the pigs. By the time the animals defeat Mr. Jones easily, that's when it has come to fruition. And by the time the animals recognize that the pigs are stopping them from achieving their goal, it was too late. The pigs are in a position to kill any animal who continues to fight for their goal. By the end of the novel, the animals cannot even sing Beasts of England, the song that expressed their dream of equality and freedom. In the story's last moments, the animals finally realize what they've been up against. By defeating their human farmer, they have not defeated the reality of political power. 
They have only exchanged one set of rulers for another set of identical ones. When Mr. Jones is defeated, the animal's new rulers, the pigs, gradually come to embody the reality of political power. Now it is the pigs who oppose the animals, in exactly the same way as Jones did, by exploiting and oppressing them. From the beginning of the novel, the animals defeat the power embodied in the pigs is heavily foreshadowed. Much of the novel's drama arises from the question of whether and when the animals will recognize that their true antagonist is not humans or pigs, but power itself. The moment of reckoning comes to the novel's final scene, when the animals see that the pigs and the humans are exactly alike, because they are equally corrupted by political power. Having looked at the protagonist of Animal Farm, we should also look at the antagonist. The obvious antagonist against the animals is the corrupting reality of political power. This abstract idea is embodied by the different characters who wield power at different times. At first, the corruption of political power is embodied in the cruel and lazy Mr. Jones, who is allegorical for the Romanov family. When Mr. Jones is defeated, the animal's new rulers, the pigs, gradually come to embody the reality of political power. Now it is the pigs who oppose the animals, in exactly the same way as Jones did, by exploiting and oppressing them. From the beginning of the novel, the animals defeat the power embodied in the pigs is heavily foreshadowed. Much of the novel's drama arises from the question of whether and when the animals will recognize that their true antagonist is not humans or pigs, but power itself. The moment of reckoning comes to the novel's final scene, when the animals see that the pigs and the humans are exactly alike, because they are equally corrupted by political power. In conclusion, Animal Farm is an animal favour, or a beast fable, because it uses animal characters to make a concise, forceful argument about human morality and politics. Throughout European history, writers from Aesop to Jean de La Fontaine have used animal fables as a way of criticising their own societies under the cover of a harmless story about animals. For example, Aesop's fables are simply stories about creatures such as mice, geese and frogs. The stories end with clear moral lessons and resolutions that are applicable to daily life. By drawing on the animals' fables and traditions of social criticism, Animal Farm criticizes Orwell's own English society, as well as Soviet totalitarianism. Traditionally, fables rarely include more than one human character, but Orwell subverts this convention. By including several human fibers in his favor, Orwell reminds his readers that the exploitation and oppression of animals is not just a literary metaphor for the exploitation and oppression of human beings. The exploitation of the animals really happens and relies on the same process as the exploitation of humans. In conclusion, I think that Animal Farm is definitely worth reading. While it's not one of my favourite novels, and in fact I struggle to reread it and to reanalyze the text itself, I understand its importance and it has many lessons to teach. There are so many different layers to it and it's such a fascinating novel that I had to include it in this series. And I definitely recommend you reading it. It's a quick read, you'll get through it very easily, and it's enjoyable. And there are some funny moments and some emotive moments that make the novel fairly enjoyable. Um, I'd also love to know if any of you have read this novel, what your opinions on it are, and if you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video, also be sure to leave that in the comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. And please give it a thumbs up if you would like to see more like this. Uh, suggest any novels you would like me to cover. And also subscribe for more. I post at least once a week, every week, sometimes more. And yeah, thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a nice day.